Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Love Joy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, please hit the subscribe button so that way you can uh, check out the other videos. And if you've been here once or twice, thanks so much for coming back and getting creative. In today's video, we're going to do a really nice beginner painter. So this is good for those of you um, that don't have a whole lot of experience with the painting process. And I fully believe that with more and more practice, you get more comfortable with the process of painting. So that's what these videos are for. For your supplies, there is going to be a link in the description box below. So check out what you need, grab the supplies, and then kind of pick up the video for the painting portion. You're also going to see a link below for a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to transfer their image onto their canvas and not have to stress out about drawing and you can jump right in and focus on the painting process. There is also going to be a video on how to transfer your traceable with carbon paper um, or even graphite paper. When you're ready to take your skills to the next level, check out my online school paintwithlovejoy.com and check out the Paint Your Pet course. Um, in that course you will be painting from your own photograph and you'll learn the value scale of your pet's fur. And the, it's a kind of a basic skill that once you learn that, you can actually apply that to many other creative processes. And when you paint something that you love, you actually put a little more energy into it and everybody loves their pets. So like I said, when you're ready to take your skills to your next level, check out that course and um, enjoy the process of painting your pet. With this video and any of my videos on the channel, you have full permission to switch out colors and make this your own. Just use this video as a base um, and get extra creative with your paintings. So uh, I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. guys it's gonna be another fun painting so grab your supplies um, transfer your traceable to your canvas and as always make sure you take your progress photos now for this painting um, I truly want you to embrace um, your inner five-year-old I want you to slap the paint on the canvas and feel free to switch out colors so here I'm using the middle flat brush and a yellow and white mixture and I am kind of putting these in random spots. So this is a great painting if you're kind of frustrated, maybe had a lousy day, um, and you just need to slap some paint on the canvas. This is a good one for you to do. So as you do this, just kind of observe the place that I put each of these colors and mimic that to the best of your ability at home. Don't think too much. So here we're moving into a light teal, and that's gonna be white with a little bit of teal your shade might be a little bit different. And again, you can switch out colors. So we're just gonna slap the paint on there, try a few different brush strokes. If you feel like finger painting, go right ahead. And I want you to actually do this painting in one sitting. Um, do it kind of quickly, just get it out and enjoy the process. You'll, you'll be impressed with yourself. Here you can see I'm grabbing that teal directly and slapping it right on top of some of the lighter teal that I was putting on there. Um, Again, if you're using student grade paint, um, I want you to apply your paint pretty thick as you do this and don't wait for it to dry. I want you to do this all with wet paint. It's going to give you good experience um, with working with thicker paint and with a little bit of blending. So here I'm using that purple and using the direct purple so it makes it kind of dark and going right underneath the keys on the keyboard. And if you're on a, a stretched canvas, carry that any color that reaches the edge of the canvas, carry it around the side. Um, it just looks nice when you hang it on the wall, being able to have that color wrap around the edge. We're applying the same direct purple, rather thick, right above the keyboard as well. And if you happen to overlap into another area, don't stress. Um, I want you to like I said earlier, just slap the paint on here, have fun, be expressive, do all the stuff that you're probably not supposed to, or you think you're not supposed to do with painting, do it here. Um, and the reason I want you to paint a little bit thicker is that you'll carry this skill into some of your other paintings. 
So again, without letting the paint dry, grabbing that direct blue, kind of filling in the top and bottom space, and we will be putting some other colors on top of this. All right, you guys are doing a great job. If you're holding your breath, exhale. And if you're finding that your brush is kind of shaky as you go to apply paint, um, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, and that will help. Don't think too much on this one, just paint. All right, so clean that brush really good. Take your progress photo. Um, we're gonna jump right into white. We're basically gonna slap that on top of the keyboards. Now my yellow paint is still wet, so I'm being a little cautious um, when I come around the edge of it, but not super cautious. If you do overlap a little bit, totally okay. And you can even see where I'm going over the lines from uh, when I transferred my traceable. And just a note for the traceable, I did outline it with Sharpie marker for my students at home that um, draw what they see instead of purchasing the traceable. And in that little corner, you can see where I got a little bit of the purple in with the white. Don't freak out. Embrace it. You can wipe it off if you need to. Um, I even, you can see here, grabbed a little bit more, and I'm just carrying it through in a few other spots um, on the canvas. And this is what we call happy accidents and working with what you have in front of you. The more that you can embrace your own painting style, the more fun you're going to have in the process. So now we've moved on to blue, and we're doing the side of the um, small black keys on the keyboard. And then without cleaning the brush, grab some of that purple and went on the front of those keys and now using black on the top. If you do a different order than what I do, or you do all purple or blue, totally okay. I'm just glad you guys are painting at home. And now I'm just kind of going back to where any space of the canvas was showing with whatever, I think it was some of the black and purple paint still on my brush, just kind of filling in um, any open canvas spaces. So another place to pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna clean the brush really good and now we're gonna to move to red paint. Still, my paint's kind of wet and I'm still slapping this paint on here really thick and very expressively. Um, if you have a little trouble with being expressive, push your chair back from your painting and maybe with more of a straight arm, apply some of your uh, brush strokes, but kind of sitting away from it makes it a little bit easier. Um, again, if you want to finger paint, go right ahead. That's a lot of fun. Um, now we're grabbing some white, putting a few little highlights on the keys. And like I state in a lot of my videos, trust your instincts. If you are inclined to put a color somewhere I do not, especially for this painting, go right ahead and add that color to your painting. Uh, so now we're going to move back into the teal and just kind of very expressively light pressure, uh, you don't want to hold your brush too tight, keeping kind of a loose hand, a loose wrist, and just going back to a few little shadow areas. All right, and don't forget to pause your video, take your progress photo. This part right here with the black is going to be a little bit more controlled as we outline the keys, and that will be similar to the traceable uh, lines that you'll be going over again. And this one, if you do want to let your paint fully dry and then do the outline, um, this would be a good place to do that. But if you are moving right along, um, go right ahead. You don't have to let your paint dry and just keep moving about your painting. You are learning a lot right now as you apply your paint thicker, as you slap the paint on there. And when you go to do some more controlled paintings, um, you will understand the uh, benefit of thicker paint. You'll understand the benefit of possibly some sloppy brush strokes that add to style. Um, but again, just doing stuff in maybe manners you're unaccustomed to strengthen the areas that you're really good at. Um, and in the art world, it's important to kind of push your comfort zone and push your boundaries and learn new things in a very healthy and safe manner. All right, so outlining those and you can see that I about every two or three brush strokes, I am grabbing more black paint. So make sure you do that so you're actually applying paint to the canvas. And again, anywhere that you may be inclined um, to add any particular color or just mimic what you watch me do on the screen. It is more important the fact that you are painting rather than what your final outcome is going to be. 
And as I was telling a student today, it is progress, not perfection, because your idea of perfection, especially in art, is going to change as your skills improve and get better. All right, so here we're going back to the yellow, putting a few highlights on top of those keys. And I actually like the yellow and black color combo. It's a nice pop, a nice high contrast. Putting a little bit above and below. And this is a good point to stand away from your painting for about five, about three to five feet. Look at it from a distance and go, do I need more blue? Do I want more red? Do I want to bring in a new color? Trust those gut instincts and add what you need to to your painting. And no matter what you paint, I want you to email me those photos. Send them to paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. All right, now moving into that red. Uh, just a few little places, just slap it on there. You will be amazed at how much better you feel or more relaxed and how you kind of get lost in the process of literally slapping the paint on the canvas. This one's more about feeling good and uh, creative re creatively um, challenged and just enjoying the process. So going in with a little bit of that blue, a few little areas. I'm really proud of you guys for painting. I hope you enjoyed this kind of fast and expressive uh, musical painting today. All right, so a little bit more white, few little highlights on there, anything that needs to jump out. Trust your instincts. All right, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I always look forward to painting with you. Until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you liked how your paintings turned out. As you're uploading your photos to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I can't stress enough how much uh, your feedback, your sharing this with the community and sharing your photos has helped this channel grow. So please keep it up. You're doing a great job and you're getting more people to try painting and realize how much fun they um, have during the process. So keep it up. Um, anything that you'd like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment and I will add that to my production list and get to it as quickly as I can. I am a solo producer here, so um, they do go a little bit slower than I would like, but hopefully we'll be able to bump that up one day. But either way, um, I'm still thrilled with all the pictures and the stuff that you guys are painting at home. So until next time, have a great day, and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Thank you.